Hello everyone and welcome. So in today's video we're going to do a Bifrost tutorial in Maya and the idea is to take um, an initial piece of cloth that I have in here and deform uh, a pattern to take the shape of that cloth. In this case it will be a weave pattern that we're going to create from scratch. So the weave pattern is going to be based on this tutorial by Mark Venture, so all the credits to him. And the inspiration from for, for this tutorial is from the Antagma guys, where they create a similar setup in Odini. So yeah, let's get into it. So in a fresh new scene, let's create a new Bifrost graph and get rid of the initial nodes. And first of all, we will need to create the weave pattern. And for that, we will need some strands or curves. In Bifrost, they are called strands. So in Bifrost, you need to go a bit low level. You don't have like a line node or uh, some, some higher level nodes like that. So, but it's actually nice because we can build uh, and learn from it. We can build ourselves our own nodes. So. I'm going to create a sequence array that is going to create a, um, an array of some values. And in this case, I want to set the size to 3 and the start to 0 and the step to 0.5. And you will see how we're going with this. So if I do a, a scalar to vector and connect this to the Y, let's create an output in here. And let's watch these values in here. So if I add a watch point and open. So in this case, we, ha we have a size of three, start of zero and a step of one. Let's do a construct points and disconnect this. And let's see. So as you can see, we have three points. It's a bit hard to visualize. But let's see if we can actually see this now and return. So if we go to the value, we have uh, three uh, entries in our list or array. The first one is 0, the second one 0 0.5 and the third one. So this will be our strand. So instead of constructing the points, and let's get rid of this output, we will construct strands. And since there will be ordered we can actually have um, the correct result so this will just build uh, one strand from zero to one in this case we will have two points and we can visualize that with a point scope so if we set in here point scope then you can see those three points i like to set this to circle and decrease the value something like this so as you can see we have three points but let's say we want more. So for that, after this, we can create here a pass node. It's just like a null and connect it in here. Let's get this one. Let's do resample strand. And we can connect this. And if we change this spatial distance, we can start to increase the amount of points. So in this case, I want to control these with a value node. So I can just right click and create value node. And I'm going to set a value at 0.01. So maybe this is too much, 0.01. Let me see how much did I use. I ended up using a lot, but for now, let's keep it as 0.1. So let's keep it for as 0.1. So the idea now is to deform these in a wavy pattern using the scene function. But for that to work, we need to have an attribute or a property on our curves. In this case, we need uh, what is called in Bifrost point ratio. I believe that's how it's called in Bifrost. Uh, in Odini, for example, it's called curve view. And I'm not sure if there is a node that can calculate that by default. But let's actually build one. So we're going to get the point count. So get point count. And we need to decrement by one. 
and convert this to a float, otherwise it won't work. Let's just get some space in here. And then we need to get the indices. So get component indices. In this case, we will get the point component. This will be just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the each point number. And we need also to convert it to a float. And then we just divide the, the indices by the point count minus one. And if we set geo property and we will connect this data and we will set here point ratio. And if we go to this point scope and we say color property and set point ratio, we should have, sorry, we need to get rid of this. So let's see. Am I selecting? No. So color property. So let's see if I watch this, we have the point ratio in here. It's always hard to visualize things in Bifrost, but this should work. So we have the point ratio across our points and let's actually create a new point scope and we will use point ratio oops point ratio and yeah it's working now let's just see if we switch this to oh the circle we will never see it of course so we need to to set it to sphere or you can set it to num numeric and you will see the numbers but in this case, let's set it to disk. So as you can see, we have a value going from black to white or from zero to one. So that's our point ratio. Now we can take all of these. And let's control G and let's just set point ratio. Let's visualize these all and now we need to duplicate this curve around so we can have we start we can start to create the, the pattern itself so in order to duplicate this curve around or this trend we need to use um, a loop or oh, or it's the easier the easiest way to do it so i'm going to create a for each and in these max iterations, we'll we will control how many we will create. So we will pass for this for each uh, the geometry, so the curve. And let's connect it to the output. And now we will take the point position from the curve. And then we will add it. We will add to the point position and we will at the end set point position so if we do this and visualize our outputs we can just do a merge geometry since this is an array of strands and right now is not doing much but in this case we want to duplicate it, let's say three times so we need to offset it, in this case, along the x-axis. So for that, I'm going to take the current index and convert it to a float. And multiply it by some value that I'm in here and call it offset x. And then we can take a scalar to vector and we will offset it along the X. And then we're going to add it to our current point position. So we just need to play now with the offset. And as you can see, we are indeed duplicating our initial curve. 
so you can pause the video and take a look at the setup again but this is pretty standard you just take the current point position and offset it by some amount taking in co in into consideration the current index in this case we are offsetting on the x so now we need a way i want this pattern to be constrained to the zero to one uh, space in here so we can later easily instance the geometry or uh, deform the pattern by another geometry so for that to work we need to set some some values in here so in the max iterations and in the offset the way you're going we're going to do that is first of all by creating a value node let's say we have three iterations and i want to stretch them let's actually offset this a bit i want them to be constrained to this zero to one space so for that to work i'm going to take a value node and set it to one and i'm gonna divide it divide i'm gonna divide this one by the the max iterations that we need to decrement by one and convert it to a float so two float let's see if that works for us and we're going to divide it and connect this to the offset so as you can see now we can increase and we will always have this zero to one space So now that we have <clears throat> our curves, let's do, uh, create the wave pattern or the weave. So after this for each, I'm going to create um, inside this for each. I mean, I'm going to create a compound. And I'm going to call it this wave. Connect this and output the geometry and let's connect it to the output so we can visualize it so now let's say we want to displace it along the z-axis so we get the point position and we will need to set point position and this will be zero so we need to read that but in this case we want to add to it And what we will add, we will add a scalar to vector tree. And we will add, let's say, 0.2 along the z-axis. Let's see how that works. So we're just offsetting along a specific axis. So in this case, I want to set this to 1. And let's see. So uh, let me get some space. I want to add this. And I'm going to create here. Uh, I'm going to get point ratio. So get point property. Get geo property. And I'm going to get the point ratio. And I'm going to multiply it by some value so let's create a value node connect it in here and set it the frequency so this will be the frequency of our pattern and now we can multiply this so get this multiply it in here set it and uh, let's see in this case we don't want it like this we want it we want to multiply it by this value and set it so in this case is one and let's see the frequency And let's set it to three and now we just need to create the same function 
and we start to wrap the desired result, I think. So let's just increase the frequency and we start to get the pattern. Now we want to introduce a value to control the amplitude, so uh, how much displacement there is. So I'm going to create a value node in here. Oops, not this kind of value. Create a value and it's to be a float. I'm going to connect it in here and call it uh, amplitudes. And connect it in here. And now we can just offset it a little bit. So now we need to do some maths operations. So we have some perfect overlapping patterns. And for that, I'm gonna take, so let me check my file. So we have the amplitude, we have the frequency, and now we need an offset. So in order to have the offset, we're going after this multiply. So from the point ratio, so ratio after this multiply and before the scene, we're going to add a value in here. And we will connect here a value node and call this offset. If that works, and it does, you can see. One. So yeah, it's work. So we need a few more points, but that's okay for now. So now we will take the. Um, let's organize this a bit. So now we need to take the. Um, the frequency and the offset and multiply it by 2 pi as su suggested in this in this video from Mark Venture. As you can see is multiplying both the offset and the frequency by 2 times pi. So 2 pi. And that will work great at the end. It will create the perfect per pattern. So let's do that. So let's take pi and multiply it. I'm not sure if there is a node that actually creates that by default, but we will create one, so multiply it by two. And we will just take the offset. So where is our offset in here? And we will multiply. Multiply by this to pi. And we will do the same with our frequency. So where is our frequency? Right in here. So before we multiply the point ratio, we will get a multiply in here. And multiply the same amount. And I already see that there is an issue. So we actually need to do something here. So let's disconnect this point ratio. So we take the frequency, multiply it by the 2 pi. And after that, we can take this multiply. and add it in here. So this looks incorrect, but if we actually change these offsets, you can see that it's starting to work. So in this case, I want to set the offset, let's see, 0.25. And yeah, that seems to work. We will actually set in a different way because we need to drive these parameters with uh, some constants. So for now, we will set the, the offset outside this. So we have the offset, the amplitude and the frequency. 
So let's see if this works. In this case, we have a fixed amplitude, so something like this. And as the frequency, we want to take the max iterations and convert it to a float, but in this case we need to decrement by one and convert it to float to float divided by two subdivided by by two and connect this to the frequency. Let's see how that works. So yeah, that is creating the perfect pattern. And we also need to offset this to change this. Let's continue with this. So for the offset, we need to offset based on each each individual individual strand. So for that, I'm gonna use the modulo and take the current index, so the current uh, iteration, and I'm gonna modulo by two and convert this to a boolean. And in an if if statement. I'm gonna set case of true to zero and in case of false to 0 0.5 and connect this to the offset. So now if we actually increase the amount of segments we have, so 0.01, we will get this sort of result. And let me see, increase the amount. And we also need to play with the amplitude. So now we have this, this pattern in here. Let's continue on the next part. So now we need to create the horizontal lines. So for that, let's copy this setup. Control C, Control V. And it will automatically copy the or connect this distance attribute for this distance value and in this case we want to create it along the axis <clears throat> and we also need the point ratio so let's connect that and create a new pass node and also copy this setup let's connect to the output or in this case should be the input and let's not displace it for now let's just copy this and look at the final results so in this case we need to change the to change the the value in here or the axis so we need to change it to y it's creating a pattern so let's instead create a fan in input and connect both of these and let's see how that looks so as you can see it will be easier if we create uh, how it's called extrude strands and for that you will need uh, these these compounds these mj compounds they are free and you can download them from um, it's not github is uh, you can download them from the gumroad page that i will link below so in this case i don't want a start cap neither an end cap extrusion shape to tube and use a size of 0.01 let's see if that works for us And now I can't deselect it. Okay. So in this case, <clears throat> we will need an offset in the first pattern. So let's go in here. And where we're offsetting, we need to set here 
so this is the first and we need to add here an offset of 0.25 that initial value that i talked about so let's add here a value and set it to 0.25 and now it will be right where that line goes as you can see so now we just need <coughs> to do the same to the bottom pattern so let's actually create the displacement and we need to change a few things we also need an offset in here let's add and in this case we will create a value and set it to 0.75 and i guess this is working right oh, sorry this was <laughs> this is difficult to get my head around this but in the end we got the desired result so the next step will will be to uh, to get this pattern and sample it to the position of our cloth. So let's do that next. So let's pause this graph for now and let's create a cylinder and I'm gonna rotate it somewhere around these lines, scale it a bit and scale it in. So something along these lines you don't need to be exact maybe scale it a bit more in so something like this just to have some collision geometry for our cloud simulation because that's what we're going to do now so let's create a new graph delete this and we will drive this cylinder in here and hide let's hook up the terminal and let's create a mesh plane the plane let's also connect these in here and in this case i'm gonna follow some values so a length and a width of five and it's important you create the uvs so we can deform it later and in this case I set the position y to 3.5 and the x-axis along the x and we can set a value here of 0.1 to have some initial rotation, let's say. Uh, maybe we can introduce a bit more. This will, will always look different from my initial result, but let's give it a try. So let's do it terminal and create an npm cloud. So basic npm cloud graph. Let's uh, explode. And we will connect this cylinder in here to the collider. And set this method to mesh for points, which will be more accurate and the friction to one. And the MPM cloud will be this one. And let's enable the time slider and the range slider. Set this to, I don't know, 772. And we can drag this down and let's see how that looks. Whoa. Something is fishy around here. Okay. now let's simulate and let's make sure we have a play back speed a play every frame max real time and i need to set something in here in the provider mesh for points let's set it to volume and see so that is working and we need to change the, the divisions. So in this case, I'm gonna set it to 50 and 50. Let's change this again to mesh four points and see what's. And yeah, that will do the trick. Let's do this again and catch a frame we like. So let's say this one, so 41. Let's disable the visualization and create an output. 
I have no idea what I'm doing with these NPM clots, but you know, we try hard. So let's create my mesh and let's duplicate this. And let's clots mesh. So we have a Maya mesh, and if we go to our UV editor, we also have the UVs, which will be important in a minute. So we can close this one and drag this one in here. And let's also hide it. And let's see if we enable by hitting control dot. So the controls dot. We enable and disable the, the graph, our pause and unpause. So <clears throat> the next, now that we have the, the geometry, let's see how that looks. So this is the geometry we have. And it's a nice pattern and we can also enable this you can see our collision geometry and now let's do the sampling parts so let's do the the sampling parts so let's get the club mesh and we will update mesh normals to compute the normals of our mesh and we can leave it like that create the pass and let's convert this let me get rid of the time slider and from here we can create mesh from uv so create mesh on UVs and hopefully we will have the UVs and we do and as you can see the UVs are aligning with this pattern which will help us do the sampling parts so the it's like a UV deformer so let's see we will use let me have more space we will use the get closest locations and sample and we will get from these uvs from this uv mesh and for now let's disable this this extrude just want this and let's also hide this cylinder <coughs> so i want to move this in here And let's get point position. So we will sample from these positions. This. And now we do the actual sampling. So we do sample property. And we will sample from the initial mesh. So before it's transformed to UV space and input location and in this case we want this to mat float three since this is a point position that we're sampling by default and hopefully this will work so if we set point position and we set these sample positions this should work right and it does so let's just set Geo property and we will set this to I just want to have a better visualization of this so I'm gonna set this to net filter set it to point color if I remember exactly how this is done so assign diagnostic material and I'm gonna change this to set value type string and I'm gonna set this to point color. Let's see if that helps. Yeah. In this case, I want it black, so it won't make much difference. And let's see. I used quite a bit of geometry, so not 21. I used, in this case, 200. So you can see, but for now, let's keep it to 40. Because as you can see, we lost the um, 
the the displacement amount or the amplitude of the wavy pattern. We just have these flat lines. So in order to recover that, uh, we need to do an, an extra sampling of the height. So after this merge, so let's see after this merge, we'll. So, orange, yes. So after this merge, we will create a better two scaler, better tree to scaler, and from the point position and set geo property. And we will set the property along the Z, and we will call it height. So we want to get the Z displacement, which is the direction we have the pattern. <coughs> and so we want to do this after. So we want to sample this after. So we have already the attributes. And now let's see if I can do this. So I'm gonna... In here we created the point normals of our cloud geometry. So we can displace the, this geometry by that amount of the height along the normals. So for that we're going to sample again something. And we're going to sample the point normal. We're going to sample the point normal. And so set point position, we're going to sample from here, no, set sample here and set geo property on our curves and we will set it, let's say, and it will be our normal. And let's see if this is working properly. And we do have the value, so this should be true. So now <clears throat> we just need to displace it along the node. And for that, we're going to get geo property. And this one is going to be a ray of metal tree. We're going to get the normal. And we also are going to get float, array, float. And we're going to set, get the height. We're going to multiply these two. So multiply the normal by the height. And they will auto loop. And then we can just add the point position. Always the same. Displace along the normal. That's the idea. Set point position. So in this case we will add this two and this should give us our turn back hopefully. And I guess it does. Let's just so we're getting the pattern. Let's actually increase this to 100. And maybe we need to increase the amount of points. So in this case, I used points of one. And in order to visualize this better, we need the extra strands. So let's go in here and let's see if that works. And yeah, I guess it's working as you can see. So let's unhide these. And maybe we can go in here and increase this to 200. So it's still performance. And we uh, we might want to play with the thickness of these extra strands. So point to yeah, seven. So something like this. And you can unhide this one. Have it as a backdrop. 
but as you can see as you can see it's aligning properly with that mesh and yeah guys i guess the, this is it this is our final results we can maybe increase this a bit let's see how responsive this is of course we start to get a lot of geometry in here and it gets a bit slow but overall it's quite responsive and i hope you have enjoyed this one i know i'm not sure when i'm coming back to buy frost again i do mostly Houdini tutorials but this was a fun one to do and maybe you can get something out of this hope you have enjoyed thank you and i'll see you next time